Hey guys, how's it going? So I was going through one of my favorite books and if you remember a few years ago on the channel, I think it was 2018, uh, just before actually Vader episode two came out, maybe what was that? that was four years ago. Holy crap. I was covering some content from this book and I was going through it again because it, it's got so much cool stuff and I'm just kind of gathering different things to get ready for Kenobi. And there is some pretty sweet stuff that I came across in here that I can't remember if I covered or not. And if I did, well, I'm gonna cover it again, but this time with a little more knowledge and a little bit of a different input. So there's a page that I came across and it's this one. All right, so check this out. So right here we can see there is a concept art for Anakin Skywalker. And if you don't remember a video I did, I think five years ago, about why Anakin had dark robes, this one is actually about why Anakin had long hair. And I know a lot of people might see the title and, you know, they'll, they'll dismiss this video and they'll be like, oh, whatever, who cares, you just had long hair. Well, there's actually so much more to it, which I find really interesting, as we see that everything was by George's meticulous design. So the reason Anakin had long hair wasn't just because it, you know, made him look pretty or whatever. McKegg here says, George wanted Anakin to look more like Qui-Gon Jinn to show that he was going beyond what Obi-Wan was teaching him, hence the long hair. I find this really marvelous. I find this really interesting and really thought provoking in the sense that Anakin was actually going beyond what Obi-Wan was teaching him. You know, his powers were far beyond what the Jedi were teaching him. And this is always something that Anakin was saying. And a lot of people, I feel like, dismissed it and said, oh, well, you know, he's just whiny. And sure, he is whiny, but he definitely is meant to be further than where the Jedi have put him. And they definitely were holding him back, I believe. So this right here confirms that the long hair kind of it, it like symbolizes what Anakin's father would have, you know, should have been, uh, which is Qui-Gon Jinn and how he's kind of like Qui-Gon's son in a weird way. You know, I always saw Obi-Wan as more like a brother to Anakin, uh, even though Anakin refers to him as a father in episode two. But then, you know, in episode three, it's like, you were my brother, Anakin. I really love the fact that like these little things are just put in there. Also, something else I want to take out from this is the long hair symbolizes that Anakin is more free. He's more of a a uh, regal being than the Jedi who were maybe more kept and you know more uh, neat and tidy and Anakin was just more all over the place more fiery right and so this leads me into the second thing which is Padme's photo now George actually was planning on having Padme to have long hair as well of course what stopped him was well Anakin can't have long hair and Padme can't have long hair together. So it's only one or the two. So he chose Anakin. And the reason he wanted Padme to have long hair, and I really like this too, is he says, she's in love with a monster. So I wanted to make her courageous and strong, like a lioness. George really liked the big hair, but I'd just given Anakin the long hair so they couldn't both have it, said McKeg. That is also pretty cool because as we saw, Padme was I feel like she's a little more timid in episode three. And, you know, there were a lot more designs and a lot more thoughts uh, from what I've read that would have shown Padme to be a little bit more strong, a little bit more fierce, like that courageous uh, lion that George was trying to represent her as with the long hair. If you didn't know, there's also a concept art at the very end of Revenge of the Sith where Padme had a knife that she was trying to kill Anakin with. She showed up to Mustafar not just to turn him back, but to actually take him out. And I feel like this would have been a really cool bit to leave in there. It would have kind of made Padme not so flimsy. You know, it would have made her much more strong, much more just powerful in general, and that she's really standing her ground against the atrocities that Anakin has now committed uh, in the name of love, right? He's just being selfish. It's not really in the name of love anymore at this point. He's just gone mad. Now, on the subject that he's going beyond what Obi-Wan was teaching him, how could he have done this? Well, he was obviously seeking the information of the dark side, right? Once he spoke to Padme, Palpatine and learned the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise, he wanted access to that restricted section in the Jedi Temple. And in the novel, it actually explains the novelization of Revenge of the Sith. It actually explains how Anakin that night didn't go home to Padme. He called her and he said he had some business to do. And he actually ended up being in the library and just reading and reading and reading and trying to learn as much as he could about this Darth Plagueis and about anything he could regarding saving those that he loves from death. 
or, you know, immortality in a sense. So it's like Anakin was always on that quest for extra knowledge to go to push beyond. And this is something that I always really loved about Anakin was that he wasn't just sure he wasn't patient. And that's maybe not a great quality. I'm extremely impatient myself, but I feel like he was always trying to push the boundaries. He was always trying to find more of what he could achieve with himself. And he was never really satisfied with any sort of amount of um, power, knowledge, uh, rank that he would receive, not because of the rank or the power itself, but because he just always wanted more. And I feel like that's a very dangerous tendency to have. And this is something that I feel like is very perilous because you kind of can get caught up in your own ambitions, in your own needs and wants, and your own greed of constantly wanting to amass more of whatever it may be. It could be materialistic, it could be uh, knowledge, it could be power, whatever it might be. In Anakin's case, it was power. He always wanted more. And that is not necessarily the Jedi way. You know, that is more of the Sith way to fear losing things because eventually you amass so many things, you amass so much knowledge and power that you fear losing that power. Right? And that's something George was always talking about. So we can kind of see that just with this haircut alone and the explanation, him trying to be him, you know, George wanting him to look more like Qui-Gon Jinn to show that he was going beyond what Obi-Wan was teaching him also explains that Qui-Gon was going beyond what the Jedi Council was teaching him. And he was always, you know, steering a bit clear of the path of the dogmatic views of the Jedi being so intertwined with politics and so just confined with their own dogma. And I love this about Qui-Gon. If I have any favorite Jedi, well, I'd say there are three, but they each have their own category and they're each number one in their own category. So Qui-Gon is number one, I would say, probably overall, just as a Jedi that I would like to be like someday. What I mean by that is, you know, he's just a very real, down-to-earth, very calm person. And he always kind of just trusts in the Force, regardless what's happening. And I like that about him. Anakin is always trying to push his boundaries. He's always trying to find the next level that he can achieve. And I love that competitiveness of him, not just with him trying to compare himself to other people, but to just how good he can be to himself. And always trying to compare himself to his own self and reach that next level. And of course, you know, Luke Skywalker, who's very hopeful, very optimistic, and uh, always sees the good in pretty much every situation but it was also realistic as well. Obi-Wan is also a, uh, a favorite of mine, but not as much as the others. So just from understanding that George wanted Anakin to have long hair to resemble Qui-Gon, in and of itself opens up so many different theories and, you know, something I wanted to talk about in a video in itself. So uh, let me know what you guys think. I think this is pretty cool. I love reading stuff like this. There's a ton more. You know, there's something about Padme's dream, which I'm going to cover in uh, the next video. How she actually has a dream like Anakin had, but this time of um, his demise. And we will cover that in another video. And there's, uh, there's Yoda and stuff too with it. So it's pretty awesome. I really recommend this book. This is something I picked up four years ago now. And it's, dude, I love these books, The Art Of. Anyways, have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next video. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. A few more months till Kenobi and I will pump out as much content as I can for you guys to get you all ready and caught up and hyped as we go into this show. And uh, I couldn't be more pumped, man. Couldn't be more excited. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.